All right, so hello everyone. My name is uh, Boris Wanschus. I just uh, turned off the light. I forgot to do my hair this morning, so that's, you don't see me anymore. <laughs> uh, now, in fact, the, the screens are quite um, bright, and I hope this is uh, for you easy to, to, see, to see the slides. All right, uh, let's introduce myself. I'm uh, Boris Wanschus, as I said. Um, I am known as Boris W on Twitter, uh, Drupal.org, uh, and other social platforms. I maintain several contrips, including the Font Your Face module, the Profile Complete as percentage, um, and about 10 other modules. Uh, and I've done some contrips for Drupal 7, Drupal 8, Drupal 6. I'm chairman of the Dutch Drupal Foundation, and I'm co-founder and CEO of a Dutch company based in Amsterdam called Limoen Groen, which is Dutch for lime green, hence the limes on the previous slide. We are a company based in Amsterdam, and we are focused on building sustainable uh, websites, mainly for government, but we do more. Um, but accessibility is a thing that we find very important. So today I'm talking about speed, speedy websites. Just to make sure, this is a front-end session. If you expect me to go into detail about server configurations and varnish and whatnot, I won't. So don't, I won't be offended if you leave, that's fine. Uh, this is a front-end session. <laughs> I hear a Morton, right? <laughs> um, but to start with uh, how to do so, how to create speedy websites, let's start by telling you why it's so important to do. Um, there have been several researchers pointing out that if you have a, a slower website and one second uh, delay in speed results in 11% fewer page views, a 16% decrease in customer satisfaction, and more important, a 7% loss in conversion. I'm not sure how accurate these numbers are, but for me they are quite um, convincing to, to pay some attention to make your site speedy. Uh, also keep in mind that uh, search engines like Google take into account um, the speed of the website. So th for a few years now, about two years, they rate slower websites uh, lower in page rank than they do for faster websites. Um, so and if we calculate the 7% loss in conversion on a real e-commerce website like an Amazon website. If they have a website and they, it would be one second slower, they lose $1.6 billion a year, which calculates to 1.1 euros a year and a bazillion Czechies kron, I guess. <laughs> so it's quite important to make your site speedy. Um, and the funny thing is, for a few years, I always thought to update your MySQL cache size and um, do, uh, put varnish in front of a server and whatnot. Well, actually, it seems that 80 to 90% of the render time of your website, or, or the, the time it takes to, to view the actual, the actual website, 80 to 90% of that time is spent in the front end. That is your browser rendering the CSS and the JavaScript files and downloading all the needed assets. Only 10 to 20% is the web server actually uh, doing the MySQL stuff and the PHP stuff and uh, generating the HTML and sending it to the client. Um, this research has been done on several websites, but including the 50,000 websites on archive.com. And here the number is even higher, 13% backend and 87% frontend, um, which makes the golden rule, and the, 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 this rule, the performance golden rule, is um, thought of by Steve Saunders. He's the head performance, uh, the head performance manager at Google. Uh, he, he, he wrote a blog post about this so-called performance golden rule saying that if 80 to 90% uh, is actual the time spent in the front end, let's start there by optimizing the website and don't start putting varnish, et cetera, in front of your servers. Of course, varnish and other optimizations uh, uh, tools on the web server is important if you have a website with, say, 10 million visitors a day. Uh, but for us, most of the times, that's not the case. And we have a website with maybe 100 visitors or 1,000 visitors. Um, and then varnish in such, such a case won't really help. It might help a bit. Optimizing the front end is easier. You can do it in a few uh, few hours, um, at least the most important parts, and it's a big win. So let's focus on front end. Um, and to begin with, how actually does a browser work? What happens if you if you type in the URL in your browser? And um, um, so I'm I'm going to talk talk you a bit through the steps that hap that happen. So if you if you enter a URL like Google.com, a DNS request has been uh, is made to fetch the belonging IP address, 
so your browser knows to which uh, IP address to connect. This DNS lookup takes about 20 to 120 milliseconds. Then the browser scans the HTML and uh, starts to look for all the CSS files, all the style declarations, because it needs the style declarations first. Um, because CSS files, CSS style declarations, whether it be files or inline styling, that blocks rendering of the page. Um, and the reason the browser waits uh, until it uh, downloaded all these styles is that it wants to make sure it doesn't redraw. So, so say one CSS file defines the background color as black and another CSS file defines the same background color, the, the same uh, the background color of the body um, as yellow. It would be very annoying if you see the page flickering all the time while every CSS file has, has been downloaded. So therefore the browser waits until it has all the CSS files uh, and only then it starts rendering the page at once. So for this reason, we want to make sure to put the CSS files uh, as high as possible in the page so that the browser has access to those CSS styles as soon as possible. Then the browser starts downloading all the assets, images, uh, JavaScript, fonts, whatnot. Um, and when it um, hits a JavaScript request, it stops downloading all the other assets because the browser can download so many files at a time. Currently, that's about four to eight uh, assets at the same time from the same domain. However, if it gets to one JavaScript file, it stops downloading immediately all the other files. And it waits until that, 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 that single JavaScript file has been downloaded. It reads the content and then starts downloading the next JavaScript file. And the reason it does is that the JavaScript file can uh, influence the, the DOM of the body. It can change the HTML. It can even make you download more JavaScript files or remove other JavaScript files. And for that reason, uh, the browser waits until it has fully downloaded one JavaScript file and then continues with the next. And for that reason, we want to put the JavaScript as low as possible in the body. So we can see a page. We have the CSS already. We have the HTML elements. Uh, we already see some images popping up on the screen. And then in the end, finally, the, the images start to slide because the JavaScript is, is down, but it's fine. So in my presentation, I want to achieve the following, and I hope I can make this clear a bit. Um, to put the CSS on top because it blocks rendering, to put JavaScript as low as possible because it blocks downloading other files, um, how to minimize the number of requests. So let's try to remove as much unneeded stuff um, as possible. And for the, the data that we are going to send over to the client, compress the hell out of it, make it as small as possible by compressing it. Um, and another tip is to spread assets across several domains because a browser can download far too files from the same domain so we might split those files across several domains so we can download uh, 12, 24 files at the same time. So let's start uh, because, oh yeah, sorry, um, in, uh, Drupal already puts the CSS on top by default. So we can start with uh, bullet point two, JavaScript in the footer. And this is done quite easily using the hook.js alter in Drupal. You can put this in your template.php um, or your team file in, uh, in Drupal 8. It's the same hook in Drupal 8. You get a variable, an array with all the JavaScripts. I think most of you. Can I see some hands? How many of you are front-end developers? That's about half of the audience. Oh. OK. Um, so you get, a, you get a big array with all the JavaScript files, which are basically URLs to the file on the, on the file system. And, and the only thing you need to do is change the scope to the footer. And by doing so, Drupal puts the, the variables in the closure variable, which is by default in the, in the in the last part of the body element. Uh, however, some JavaScript libraries require it to be on top, um, on top of your body element. For instance, the modernizer, because the modernizer influenced the HTML. It puts some elements on the, on the body element, uh, and CSS files needs those elements. So the modernizer is one of those libraries, and I think the only one in most cases that you need to put on top, and the, the other ones can go to the footer. Um, there are several base themes. Most of you may use them, like Aurora or uh, um, Adaptive Team or Zen. They, uh, I think Mothership has it too. Um, they have team settings in the, in the back end where you can just check all the JavaScripts that you need or don't need and to put all the JavaScripts in the footer. All right, let's go on with the next uh, bullet. Minimize requests, how to make sure to only send uh, da data to the client that he actually needs. And for us teamers, I call myself a teamer as well, um, it's quite annoying to always override all the CSS that Drupal outputs. So I use this, theme, uh, this, this function a lot, hook CSS alter, it's almost the same as the JavaScript one, which you can use to unset all the CSS that you don't need, uh, whether it be contrib files or Drupal core files. 
So this is basically how you do it, throw, it, throw out all the stuff like, the, uh, for instance, the comments, comment styling, such a thing I always remove because we have a graphical design which has comments styled, so why should I overwrite all those uh, Drupal core styles? And if you want to be very uh, rough, you can, ease, uh, can also do it like this and, and loop through all the CSS files. And if the path contains the core module, uh, the, core, the core folder in Drupal 8, uh, it is a Drupal core CSS file and you can inset it. So with this piece of code, you remove all the Drupal core CSS. Uh, th this might be a bit too much, but you can use it. So let's look at Drupal 8. When we enable Drupal 8 out of the box, we install it. I didn't enable any uh, contrib module whatsoever. Um, and I look at the source of the HTML, I see this. Drupal puts 35 requests for CSS files in the HTML, which is a lot, I think, and also 50 JavaScript <coughs> files. So we end up with 85 requests for the front page only, by default. I was quite surprised, but it seems you, you are okay with it. <laughs> Um, so we need aggregation, and uh, luckily this is in Drupal core, so we can just enable the checkbox to uh, aggregate all the CSS and JavaScript. However, there is always a however. Uh, this is what, what you get, uh, and the only thing here what happens is I visited the front page and I visited uh, node one, in this case, the first node on the front page. So I, I did two page requests, uh, and these are all the CSS files that Drupal generated. And what surprised me is uh, there is one file that which is 34 kilobytes and one file which is tr uh, 33 kilobytes. The 33 kilobyte file is the one on the front page. That one has been sent to the, to the client on the front page. Uh, the 34 kilobyte has been sent to the client on the, uh, on the node one page. And I did a diff to see what, what the changes were in those two files. Uh, and it seemed that only the comment.css file and the wysiwyg.css file uh, were needed on the, on the, um, on the node one page because th that, that node had a uh, comment form below. Um, but Drupal uh, isn't smart enough to, to know that the 33 kilobytes have already been sent to the client. So it simply just aggreg aggregates all the file requests, all the CSS requests on that page, makes it a new uh, uh, CSS file and sends it over to the client. So we, we are sending over and over the same CSS code with the aggregation in Drupal, which is quite dumb. The good thing is Drupal already gzips the files. So you see for every CSS file also a gzip file and within the HD access file, uh, Drupal does a redirect to the, to the gzip file um, if, the, if the browser supports it. Uh, if you have access to the server configuration, it, it's better to let the gzip be handled by the server instead of Drupal. So if the server, uh, and if, if the server supports gzipping, enable it there and disable it in Drupal because uh, your web server is, is better and faster at it than Drupal. Um, the good thing is the CSS in Drupal is already on top. So a few months ago, I discovered the Advanced CSS JavaScript Aggregation Module. I think it's a module with the longest name I know of. Um, and the, 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 the short name is uh, AdVAGG. I was, I was in doubt if I should call it AdVAGG or AdVAG, but I think I stick with AdVAGG. Uh, this is a great module. Uh, it, does, uh, it does the aggregation in Drupal a lot better than Drupal Core itself. Um, it, is, it's, it is smarter. In Drupal Core, it can happen if you clear caches. And exactly at that same time, a user requests a page. Um, when you clear the cache, the CSS files have been de uh, are deleted and, and regenerated. And during that process, if the user just requests a page, he gets a blank screen. He gets a screen without any styling. The advanced CSS uh, aggregation module prevents this and has a better solution for it. Uh, it does also the, the ordering of the JavaScript and the CSS, better aggregation, and it can minimize your CSS and JavaScript as well. I'll come back to that later. Are you seeing anything? Yeah. Oh, my screen is empty. Um, lazy loading content, I think most of you know it. Um, Twitter does it, Facebook does it. If, if you have long pages of content and you scroll down, you see content appearing on the screen. This is, uh, this is a very no-brainer for pages where you have lots of images and lots of assets, because why would you want to send 100 pictures over to the client if he's only looking at the top 10? So in that case, it might be better to just show pictures uh, once they appear in, uh, in your, in your viewport, viewport of the browser, just like this. There are several JavaScript and uh, jQuery uh, libraries that can offer this solution, and Drupal has some modules as well to do the in integration out of the box. 
and use sprites. Um, how many of you already do use sprites? Wow. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Well, then I can skip this quite easily. Um, for the few that don't know what sprites are, in short, what it does, you generate one huge image with all those icons combined into one single image. In your HTML, you define elements with classes. Say I have a div with the class uh, Twitter icon. In my CSS, I define this div as 10 by 10 pixels. And I position my huge background image just so that the Twitter icon on the huge image is positioned exactly below my 10 by 10 div uh, t uh, icon container. Now, a few years ago, we had to generate such a sprite in tools like Photoshop. Uh, this is not needed anymore. Um, there are better ways to do it. Uh, one of them is Compass. This is a, let me check, oh, all right, let's go back once. There it is, oh, it's already starting. All right, so this is a website we, re we recently built for Hero, which is a Dutch producer of drinks, uh, ice creams, uh, jellies from your, uh, from your bread. They have uh, lots of products and they wanted to show these products on a so-called product finder, it's a Dutch website. Uh, and if you go to the product tab, you see the same as you see here, the slideshow, but then on a full page. Uh, and what they wanted to do is that they want the clients to be able to filter the products based on the category they were in or the, the ingredients they, uh, they have. Uh, we've built this with JavaScript, so you can say, um, let me see all the drinks you have that contain bananas. And you can see on this page, there's lots of images, not only icons, but also all the ingredients here. 47 ingredients out of the top of my head. So if we would send all those uh, assets to the client as a single file, we end up with about 80 assets on a single page. So what we did, we used Compass to generate uh, an image sprite, which is the image you see on the right side of the screen. Um, in, comp in Compass, you can simply throw all the icons in a folder and it generates automatically one sprite. And if you update one of the icons, the, the, the sprite is, uh, is regenerated automatically. And uh, we did the same for all the ingredients. So we, we ended up with two sprites, one for all the ingredients and one for all the icons. And with, by doing so, we brought back 80, as, uh, 80 requests to the server to just two. And this is then how it looks in um, your file system. And this is what Compass outputs. So it says for all the list items in my ingredient unordered list, just use the same background image and then per list item, reposition the background image. All right. So we know um, about sprites, about lazy loading, about uh, aggregation. And then we have one more tip to send less data. Um, I told you how to remove unneeded CSS using the CSS alter hook and the hook JS alter. How to gzip your data before sending it to the browser, um, but you can also minify it. Drupal does a bit of minifying out of the box if you put on the aggregation checkbox. Um, but there are better tools to do so. Uh, for CSS, you, you cannot do much more than just remove all the comments and uh, white space because the elements in the HTML won't change, so you, so you cannot change the CSS at well, uh, as well. For JavaScript, however, it's quite easy to change all the nicely readable function names into a short name with just one or two characters, and same for all the variables because your browser doesn't know and doesn't matter how the function is named as long as the call to that function is uh, changed as well. So there are tools to do so, uh, and I took uh, the jQuery.js in Drupal 8 for, for uh, as an example. This file is um, the one that is shipped in core currently, 250 kilobytes for just a single file. This is not a minimized file, so that therefore all the comments and the white space makes it 250 kilobytes. But if you minify this with the JSLint, for instance, which is such a tool, um, it strips out all the comments, it, it minimizes the function names and the variables, and you end up with a file which is minified 129 kilobytes, and if you then compress it using gzip, you end up with only 37 kilobytes. So it saves you about uh, almost a tenth of the original file. Uh, there are several tools that can do this. Um, Compass can help here, uh, but the AdV AGG module does this also for you, and you can choose which minify tool you'd like to use. So, they come with uh, spread your assets over several domains. Um, there, else, there are options to do this. You can use a CDN, a content delivery network. Um, and basically what a content delivery network does is that you can put all the assets, you, can, you spread your assets over uh, a content delivery provider. Amazon is one, uh, Akamai is one. 
Uh, and they make sure that they spread all the assets across the globe, across a several network of servers, so that when someone from coming from China visits my blog, which is hosted in uh, Amsterdam, um, they don't have to download all the images from Amsterdam, but they can just download the image from the, the server nearby in China. And only the HTML is, is, is sent from, the, from Amsterdam in this case. Um, so this is really a help, helpful uh, to, to make your site speedier. And also, your browser can, as I already said, download 4 to 8 files from the same domain. So if you spread your assets ab across the three domains, you can download 24 files at the same time. However, don't overdo this, because you have to keep, keep, uh, keep in mind that the DNS lookup is slow. It's about uh, 20 to 120 milliseconds. So if you have too many domains, the site ends up slower because of all the DNS lookups. Um, there is a small tip you can use to overcome this a little bit. In the head of your page, you could use the DNS prefetch tag. I'm not sure if you can read it. Um, but basically, you, you reference to the domain that you're going to use later on in the page. And we've put all the scripts to the bottom. Um, so d by doing so, you tell your browser to, hey, why not just lo already look up this belonging IP address for this domain? Because we co we're going to need it later. And then once it, it's, uh, it, it gets to the point where he needs the JavaScript file from this domain, he already knows the belonging IP address and just can't download it at once. You can use the same uh, also for external fonts on Google fonts and whatnot, so the browser can just start doing the DNS request already. Um, and setting up a, a such a network of, of, of sending your files to a CDN is quite easily. Um, Wim Leers, who gave a, a session here, I think two days ago, about JavaScript and Drupal 8, he wrote the CDN module. It's an amazing module. Uh, just enable it, you can go to your favorite CDN provider, I use uh, Amazon S3, um, and you just enter the URL that Amazon gives you here, um, and Drupal takes care of the rest of, actually the CDN module takes care of the rest. Uh, and once you enabled it, uh, enabled it the, the, C the CDN uh, provider will download all the assets and puts it on, on their own server. Um, it's a big win. You can choose using this interface to put your JavaScripts on one domain and all your CSS files on another domain uh, and all your images on another domain. Oh, by the way, it's, it's always best to keep all the CSS files on the same domain as your HTML or your, your web page is loaded from um, for the same reason that we want to put the CSS on top of the page. Uh, by, by putting it on the same server as the, the HTML page, um, you make sure we don't, do well, you don't have to do that extra DNS lookup. So it's, it's, it's as fast as possible to, to push it to the client. Um, cookies, a small talk about cookies. Um, what I didn't know for a month ago is that once uh, uh, um, Drupal sets the cookie, which Drupal does out of the box, and I request a page as a client, as a browser, for all the assets I'm, I'm requesting, all the images and all the CSS files, my browser sends that same cookie back to the web server so Drupal can handle the information in that cookie. But it's not doing it just for the HTML, it's doing it for every re request. So even if it, this, this uh, cookie is just two kilobytes, if I have 40 files on my site, I'm sending over 80 kilobytes on every page request over and over again. So therefore, it's very important to put all your assets on a domain name which doesn't use the same cookie. In Drupal, there is in the settings.php file a variable called cookie domain. But default, this isn't set. This is just the same <laughs> URL as you uh, are requesting. But if you set your website, website to www.example.com and you set also the cookie domain to the same domain, you define uh, in this cookie that it is only accessible from this domain. And if I f and then set my assets on another domain, whether it be images.domain.com or assets, um, all the images on as Im assets.example.com in this case won't send over the cookie because the cookie belongs to another domain. This is the reason that, um, it's one of the reasons that Drupal.org has, has problems with cookie. I, I believe they just recently switched to www.drupal.org. Not sure. Anyhow, this is, this is one of the reasons it's better not to, to use your domain without any subdomain because you cannot uh, serve assets from the same domain without sending the cookies over and over again. What you can also do is, of course, use a, a totally different domain like Twitter does. They use the twimage.com domain for all the assets and Google and Facebook do, do the same. Um, because the domain differs, so the assets don't handle the cookies. By the way, the CDN has this by default, so if I use Amazon, for instance, as a CDN, it is a different domain than my, my own domain, so uh, it saves me all, sending all over the cookies. 
And you can do this easily in your own browser. I use MEMP locally. Um, you can just use an extra alias in your settings for your, for your, um, for your domain, point it to the same doc root, uh, and enter ss.example.com in the CDN module. And then all the assets are sent, for, sent over from this subdomain. Caching in Drupal, this is, um, I think, known to most of you. Just enable it, it's a no-brainer. You need it on a production server. Um, and tell your client just to wait five minutes or 10 minutes. Please don't set this to zero. It, uh, w once you get slash dotted on, on your website, once you get a, a million hits at the same time, and you don't enable this, this, this thing to five minutes at the minimum, um, then your server will go down. Okay. Oh, and one thing I discovered f only for a year ago, and I worked with Drupal since 4.6, is that if you enable page caching and you disable block caching, it doesn't do anything because if you enable page caching, it caches the whole page, including all the blocks on it. So it's quite surprising for me because I disable the block caching and still all my blocks are cached. It's funny. All right, so I did some tests on my own blog, for instance, for, uh, as an example. So barreswanskes.com, um, this one is hosted in Amsterdam, and I run tests from, that's very small, uh, webpagetest.org from America, from Internet Explorer 9, um, in this case. You can, you, you, this website is amazing, you can select the browser you want to use and the point of where you want to do, to do all the requests. Uh, and it gives you this, this nice interface here, saying that, well, for this request I needed five, 50 assets, uh, and in total 186 kilobytes, and it took me 2.4 seconds. Uh, and then it also does some repeating views to see if it is, is it just the first request which is slow or are all my requests slow. slow. Um, the point here is that our web server is already pretty optimized. So the, the repeating view is already quite fast. 900 milliseconds is, is uh, pretty fast. It also gives you some indicators here. Um, and one of them says that CDN isn't used, which is correct. One of them says progressive GPEGs aren't used. Um, and it brings you, might, might bring you back to, to a few years ago, maybe 10, 20 years ago, when we had the dial-up connections. And when you, when, when you download the file, you see this image popping up into screen slowly, very slowly. And only after 50% of the image has loaded, you can see what the image actually is. So therefore, we used at the time progressive images um, like this. So once you have just a few kilobytes, you can already see the image. It's quite blurry, and it gets sharper over and over. Um, but this is actually a good thing, and I would suggest using always use progressive GPEGs on, uh, on websites. Um, it, gives, it gives the feeling for a client, you can already see, is this the photo I'm looking for? No, it isn't, just scroll down and, and don't wait for the rest of the loading. Okay. So then I continued with my tests and I enabled all the Drupal cache settings, page uh, caching and uh, aggregation. And I ended up with some slightly um, quicker results, not 2.9, but 1.9, 24 requests. Um, because of the aggregation and the repeating views were a bit faster as well, but still no CDN, um, no progressive GPEGs. Then I enabled the ETV EGG module, and I get a little, uh, I get less requests and less data, and a bit faster. It's, it's, it's well, already said this is quite fast, as it's very hard to slice more uh, of this speed. Um, but but once I enabled the CDN module as well my times were dropping more and more. It was 1.2 seconds um, and 590 milliseconds, so almost half a second on the repeating views. And this is really fast. And I, I took a look at, oh yeah, and imagine that the average uh, page load of websites, the average across those 50,000 on archive.com is six seconds, which is really slow, I think. So about a half a second on repeating views is quite fast. In the Netherlands, the quickest websites are roughly about 1.1, 1.2 seconds. I was quite uh, happy with this, with just a few, one or two hours, enabling modules and configuring checkboxes. So what did I tell you? I explained how to put the CSS on top, which is um, which is by default in Drupal, and how to put the JavaScript in the footer using the hook.js alter, how to minimize the number of requests using aggregation, and you can use the atvhg module. It's really helpful. Uh, use sprites for your images, and send as little, little data as possible using minifying and gzipping can be done by Compass, can be done by uh, online websites, it can be done by the AGG module. And spread your assets over several domains, but don't overdo it. And as a guideline, I would say, if you, uh, you, you should use about 20 assets per domain. So if you're 
single page needs 40 assets, you might consider using one CDM, one extra domain for your assets. And for 60, use two, uh, two, two extra domains. All right. Here I've put some uh, some extra links in the slides to the to the results uh, out of the the um, um, what are the first slides I told you about uh, how many seconds how many percentage uh, these are in the in the links here uh, the web performance today is a nice website with has almost daily blogs about uh, performance on websites and you can download the slides as well bit.ly slash blazingly fast ruples with dashes between So it went pretty fast. <laughs> um, I think we have time left for some questions. And by the way, my company in Amsterdam is still looking for people. We look front -end, we're looking for front-end developers and back-end developers. So if you are looking for a, a job in Amsterdam at a nice company, I put up a, a stack of cards on the table. Grab one, please. Questions? And please walk over to the microphone if you have questions, because th these are recorded. Hi. I'm a back-end developer, but I really want to help uh, to our front-end guys to, to to make uh, their life easier, and uh, and I'm very curious on on uh, this topic. Uh, uh, we very recently, uh, yeah, uh, we have a, a, a problem with uh, external assets, with uh, slow external assets. Do you have a solution with uh, how to cache them or, or something uh, something with proxy or or I don't know? How do you handle this situation? Uh, like you uh, external font CSS or something like this. So you are asking about slow assets on external domains yeah. and how to, to make sure that they, how to, how to check why they are so slow. Um, you could check the, the, cache, the cache headers mm -hmm. uh, to see if they are set fr from the domain um, because by doing so, your browser can cache the files and you only have to download them once. And also check if the cookie isn't sent over because that makes it slow as well. Yeah. Okay. These, are only f these are the two things that come up in my mind for now. By the way, I don't call myself an export, expert, so if someone in the audience has a better answer, please stand up and let's help each other there. Yeah, I'll right. be very uh, thankful if, if somebody answers. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hi, I have a question about the, the sprites. Uh, you were talking about sprites to um, get less traffic. Uh, what do you think about um, fonts for icons? We, we sometimes use um, icon fonts and embed them. What do you think about that? It's uh, very good as well. I forgot to, to, to mention it in my slides. Icon fonts is amazing. Uh, it's, it saves you all the icons in just one simple font file. Uh, and there are lots of websites, very nice websites, where you can pick out some icons. <laughs> some uh, where you can pick out some icons, uh, and it just generates the font file for you. So yes, uh, it's very good. Also, if you if you can prevent to use icons at all by by generating them using C, C, CVG of uh, SVG or um, by, by defining them in, in CSS, CSS3, uh, do so, because CSS can be aggregated, can be minified, and in icons, it's very hard to compress more out of them. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's retina friendly, yeah, that's true. So you can zoom in uh, as, as much as you want, and it stays razor sharp. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. yeah. I'm too late, how about that? <laughs> uh, can you can you make you make your question a little bit more specific? Okay. Um, <laughs> do you think we should make Drupal 8 faster, load less CSS files, make that easier for people to work with? I'm not sure. Uh, in Drupal 8, they uh, applied your idea, which I'm, uh, your uh, Morton came up with the idea to split up CSS files for what they are used for. So instead of just using comment.css, let's make it a tree. Out of out of my head, we have the comments dot. Uh, base.css, the comments.admin.css, and the comments.team.css. So as a team, we can just remove all the .team.css files and, and style them ourselves. So uh, that's quite helpful, but we have now three requests instead of one. Uh, so we need the aggregation, and the aggregation needs to be way better than it does currently. Because what I, what I showed was Drupal 8 already. Okay, um, kind of the thing why I asked that question is time I want to mention just a little buff we have in about 30 minutes around um, the new theme layer in Drupal, which is a trick, which is kind of one of the things we are talking about actually is the front end experience that we've seen here, how, how it works in Drupal. And we want to get more front end developers in now to help us out figuring out the right experience that we want. So um, I hope that you, with, the, with that, well, you don't call yourself an expert, but you are an expert that you're actually going to show up for my little buff. Um, so we're trying to gather all of the front end developers who know stuff 
that want to see Drupal be a better work tool and come and help. And that's um, the buffers in 30 minutes over at Club B, which is just over there or at the at the bathrooms. So it's this, it's the third room, and we're going to fill it up with a lot of frontenders and come and help us make Drupal 8 absolutely epic. Thanks. Just one more. Uh, hello. Uh, I actually have a small tip uh, for front-end developers. There's a small uh, like extra plugin that's called Grunt, uh, which helps with a lot of stuff for front-end designing. Uh, it does uh, soft refreshes, so you can design very easily. It also compresses your images with open source libraries, uh, compresses the JavaScript. Uh, I still have to uh, research it myself a little bit. Uh, Snugok uh, has a lot of uh, information about this, so you can ask him. Um, and a good site as a tip is also uh, Ico Moon for making uh, uh, yeah, scalable uh, icons. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I think that's about it. Thank you for the attention and have a great DrupalCon.